door! It's the floor door! What are you talking about? I don't know what that means. Oh, don't be afraid. That's great news. And that's when you see for the first time Doran drops his axe. Here they are to find out the cause of death. I'll, I'll stay on course with you if you'll have me. You're not just stuck in Barovia. There's more to you. And the giant died of being too cold. And so they ran. Surprise us once, shame on us. Surprise us twice, we fucked up again. <laughs> Welcome back to Dice Shame. This is episode 67, No Smoke Without Fire. MVP this week is Gareth Deacon for being a longtime fan and supporter of ours. Thanks so much, Gareth. Join us on the Invictus stream for more actual play D&D goodness. I'm running Harlan, James Schwartz, and Chris Bisseau through the old school Ghosts of Saltmarsh campaign. It's a great time to tune in because we're only a few episodes deep and it's a ton of fun. Catch us live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard or whenever you like on our YouTube channel. www.theinvictusstream.com is the easiest way to find us. That's the one. All right, should we do this? Let's do it. All right, let's get pumped up. Let me, let me, let me count us in. Three, two, one. Yeet! Oh man! Woo. Three, two, one. Yeet is pretty good. <laughs> yeet! <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. I mean, yeet, I get ironically, but now there's slap, which is I, I feel old when, when people something's say slap. good. It slaps. Yeah, but you know what? I always used to be like, Dad, you don't get it, huh? and now I legitimately feel old when I hear he, people is, use slap. I'm uh, like, oh no! Is it the slap or it slaps? This slaps. Yeah, like yo. This fucking track slaps. Like, I get yeah. the use of it. It just feels really foreign to my ears. Mm. It makes me think of bass guitar. That's just the... Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fact that all of you did Seinfeld dates us that anyway. Uh, <laughs> hey, guys, remember this 90s bass? <laughs> Very much on yeah. the pulse. We've aged ourselves. But to me, that's the one that makes me feel like legitimately old. Uh, it feels foreign to my ears. I get the meaning of it. It just mm. feels weird. There is one that makes me feel old, but I can't think of it right now. Because you're too old. Uh, yeah. But when I, when I do, it'll be halfway through this recording. I'll be like, oh, I got it now. <laughs> Damn whippersnappish. Oh, yeah. So here, here's a segue. Okay. Um, if, if all Good of setup. our uh, character, <laughs> if we were in a band. That was a segue. You just said, here's a segue, <laughs> and then did it. You don't need a segue when you go, here's a segue, and then you do it, because the segue is meant to be the thing you're going to say. Say. <laughs> if we were in a band, <laughs> the five of us, you yeah. know. Yes. I, I can tell you right now, I'm sure Doran would be on the bass. Oh, I can see that. Totally. You know? Oh, you mean the PCs? Huh? There's only four of you. You mean the, the, if the PCs were yeah, in no, a band. but the, right. the GM gets to be yeah. in a band with the rest of the. You get to be everybody else, the whole world. Technically, the GM would be like yeah. the manager. I'm the so. unnecessary tambourine. No, that's Kraloth. I could see <laughs> Red being like the drum, the animal drums. You know, like because he's energetic and stuff. I think Jack is definitely behind a computer and a keyboard and a synthesizer with five pedals on the ground, and he's got a whole bunch of effects queued up, and he's like, oh yeah. A theremin? I could see him using a theremin. He's <laughs> you know. doing the Johnny Greenwood thing. Yeah. Good. And then Kralot's on a tambourine. This band's terrible. <laughs> this is a bad band. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's bass, electric synth, drum, and a tambourine. A lead tambourine. <laughs> you could do something with that. The tambourine's I mean, a bit... Mm. It's got character. Nobody else sounds like that band sounds I feel like, like Kralot's also got some, like, gospel music. Oh, I could on. see like, him... True. You definitely some have some vocals Absolutely. happening. Definitely. I could also see, definitely. like... Red doing like one of the mic'd drummers where he's singing and playing, you know, as well as Doran. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mostly you just go, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that'd be Doran. Yeah. Yeah, I could see Kralov thinking that tambourine is his like musical calling and he's mm -hmm. like not that great. But then like one time, like around a campfire, like walking, he's like singing like old, like gospel, like mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. deep. Yeah. And people are like, you should sing more. Like, <gasps> Kraloth, yeah. you're wonderful. No, 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 no. I, you no, have to I, get I, up on stage. My heart's on the tambourine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can do both. You have so many facets, Kraloth. You you get to explore and grow now that you're here. You're not just stuck in Barovia. There's more to you. We forgot about Oren. Oren's probably <laughs> the one singing the singing Night Stone 4. On three. The Night Stone 4 on three. Oh. And, the, and it's like it's a... It's four like three a, time. Syncopated. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Like a Tower of Power. Oh, it's Math Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Clickety clacks. Fantasy Good. Math Rock. Great. 
Speaking of math rock, I'm just trying to find a segue into fire crackles and dances, blah, 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 that I've written. Hey, here's a segue. Oh, that's <laughs> a good one. Can we use that one twice in one, one go? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Let's do that. Well, I just found one lying around. You could use it if Ooh. you like. I got the spare segue from earlier. You want it? That's great. <laughs> Fire crackles and dances in a large pyre, mostly burnt down now, casting eerie shadows in the dark forest clearing. The smell of charred, rotting flesh is pervasive. Some of you have wrapped your noses and mouths in fabric to dull the tarry, rancid odor. The animated corpses that were just recently astride horses and whose eyes gleamed brightly with murderous zeal are now mostly charred bones. Some 50 feet away, a smaller campfire burning sweet pine and cedar provides some comfort against the horrors of the night. Thera Schindel's face is serious. She's wrapped in her cloak to ward off the cold. I know little of you or what has brought you through my forest, but I know enough folklore to recognize that these corpses are creatures of legend. The hunt lords stalk you. Well, I mean, they don't stalk all of us. Yeah. I look towards Kraloth and Jack. <laughs> yeah, it must be one of us. They seem to have eyes for you, Jack. What did you do to gather their ire? They were terrorizing a town, and we thought we'd put a stop to it. Um, and to our credit, if they're busy chasing us, they're not screwing around in, in that town. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can take them down every time. I say let them come. I, uh, I'd love to put them down for good, though. we got to find a way to, to end them. Yeah. They were specifically coming for you, Jack. Hmm. And I admire your confidence, Kraloth, but I don't know if that's a good mentality to have. I mean, we were relatively prepared here, but imagine us being in a town or... Mm. If they had patience, if they got one of us alone, yeah. we'd be in trouble. No, no, you you guys are right. I can feel my, my zeal coming through a little bit. I apologize. But even when you were down, Jack, they were they wanted to go after you again. If we hadn't distracted them, you might not be here with us. Yep. That's that's pretty concerning, uh, and I think like Jack's got got Kieran sort of clutched close to him, sort of running his hands through the the fur of his familiar, trying to find a little bit of comfort somewhere. He's got his his orb still out in his lap, wrapped in the the chains with the with the symbol of the eternal order that Kraloth gave him on it. I think he's gonna sort of he's gonna leave that that orb wrapped in chains because I think that's a really cool look. Kraloth is thinking back. Have I seen anything like this? before mm, i see you have you. your dice in your hands why don't you roll religion for me a six it's it's not something that you necessarily recognize from your time in barovia but it does occur to you that the bodies you saw astride these horses were not the same as the ones you defeated in noanar's hold mm. it seems to me that the corpses that we just vanquished and the corpses that we faced in noanar's hold were different, but perhaps animated by the same spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Red, have you taken a look to see if there are any tracks around? Where did they come from? Did they appear out of nowhere? Might be able to gain some information from that. I'm guessing they just rode out through the trees, and I bend down and take a look at the tracks. Does it seem like they were just maybe following us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think they were following us, hunting us, so to speak. And I look towards Jack with wide fearful eyes yeah i we're definitely going to put the tiny hut up tonight red do you think you could just walk through the woods and make sure there's no like nearby graveyards or anything that could be hidden here i just if these things need bodies i would feel comfortable knowing there weren't a bunch around and red sort of looks around at anybody and he's like do i have to go alone Maybe someone come with me. I'd... Sarah looks at you through the firelight. She's across the fire from you, and she shakes her head. No, no graveyards in these parts. I'm afraid. Oh, don't be afraid. That's great news. <laughs> let's let's just stay in the hut and try to get any kind of rest. This could be a tomorrow problem. Hmm. You mentioned to old Turlang and myself that you're giant hunters, spurred by destiny. Do you really believe that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And then I nudge Doran. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. And why? Because a cloud giant wizard said so? He was huge. Sounds very 
far fetched to say now, but um, there was a friend of ours who had the ability to commune with spirits on other planes and had been trying to to find the truth of what is happening to the giants, and that had led him to conclude something about the four of us and reshaping the ordinary. Why, why you above everyone in the realm? I wish I knew. Because we're awesome. Look at Doran with his awesome beard. That's right. And Kralo, look how big he is. Yeah. And Jack's got such a big brain. And I'm cool as hell. That's why we're doing it. Oh, I'll give you that. So why go to Everland at all? Mm. The city is full of merchants and wizards. What help do you hope for from them? The green dragon Clagiliamatar had told us to speak to Valharo in Everland. A dragon? Yeah, it's been a long week. We haven't taken sides with any specific type of person or creature, and so we, we've taken help from dragons and giants, uh, as well as, you know, anybody else along the way. Mm. So, yes, it, it was as interesting to me as it, as it is to you right now. Very diplomatic of you. Well, look, not enough people are, are knowing we really ran into was doing anything about the giants. It seemed like they were running amok, and it... Even though we're not going out and hunting them per se, it's it's important that somebody does something. This is a real problem that's affecting a lot of people. Well, I very much appreciate your efforts. I, for one, believe that the natural world is sacred. Just as you, Kraloth, believe that you need to maintain the balance between life and death, I am devoted to maintaining the natural order of the land. Water, rocks, plants, creatures... They all are interconnected to each other, and by the influence of conscious beings, the natural order can be misshapen or destroyed altogether by destruction or extinction. I think that preventing the world from being overrun by giants, if that is indeed what's happening, would be a very noble goal. Well, it is. I'm so glad you haven't experienced too much of it yourself. (sighs) Look, if these things hunted us, there's no reason that they wouldn't hunt again, right? I mean, I guess we need to be looking over our shoulder from here on out. Yeah, maybe we can learn more about these haunts in Everland as well. It certainly got my attention. As Jack mentioned, though, you seem to be able to handle yourselves in combat, and at least you won't be surprised this time. Well, not again. <laughs> now that we know it's not coincidental. <laughs> Surprise us once, shame on us. Surprise us twice, We fucked up again. But surprise us three times, we really should start sleeping in Liaman's tiny hut. (laughs) It won't happen. I I don't know much about giants. In fact, I myself am not well suited for fighting them. I know my strengths lie elsewhere. I've, I've never even seen one. But I am happy to call your goals my goals and to claim you as my friends. Whoa, cool. <laughs> I have a new friend, guys. Steven, did you hear that? <laughs> Red walks off to a nearby bush. It's been a pleasure to walk through these woods with you too. Um, I have something that might help you on your way if you would take it. Hmm. Um, she rummages through her cloak and pulls out a dyed red leather pouch. It's about the size of an apple tied with a drawstring. And she tosses it across the fire to you, Jack. Uh, yeah, I catch it and uh, carefully open it in my lap. On the autumn flanks of the Lost Peaks, there grows a rare plant we call a celimorn, which only blooms after being touched by a unicorn. Its fruit bestows a strange power to those who would eat it. And as you untie this leather satchel, you find eight silver berries. These are incredible. She explains to you that swallowing a berry has the same effect as imbibing a potion of invisibility. Ooh. So we make our way to bed, comforted by the relative safety of Liaman's tiny hut. Thanks, Liaman. (laughs) Thanks, Liaman. Yeah. He's a pretty creative guy. Yeah. He's just crouching over us. Wait, hut or butt? How many humanoids does it fit? I think our Uh, party is kind of swelling. Like, How many humanoids does it take to sleep in a hut? I was just about to say, there's a joke in there. Because we're up at seven now, right? Yeah. The four of you, B and Orin, and now Thera. Liaman's massive tent. Well, that is actually a tiny hut and not a massive yeah. Nine creatures of medium size or smaller can fit inside the dome with you. That's us. 
You got room for two more, but things are getting real cozy. Oh yes. Uh, and Kraloth sprawls. I so. mean that's that's we're just getting like dwarven style in here. <laughs> dwarven and Red's style. insisting that Steven comes in anyway, even though he could just be just like, Come on, guys, there's plenty of room. Steven can stand over there. <laughs> And you continue on your journey. You head through the northern reaches of the high forest for three days. And as you travel, the land around you crystallizes, catching its breath with cold. Snow blankets boughs of evergreens and crunches underfoot. On the third day, Uktor the 13th, the trees thin and finally give way to scraggly scrubland. Where the trees of the high forest once sheltered you, you are now exposed, and the wind savages your exposed skin as a winter storm blows in, crusting you in sleet. This feels a bit familiar. Red pulls out all of our winter gear from the bag of holding and like hands it out to everybody. Let it bundle up again. Get back in your snowsuits. It's amazing how that wind just comes up out of nowhere. I kind of like the winter, really. The snow makes me feel like I'm in some sort of dream. Mm. Like those ones I keep having about the weird future. <laughs> we all kind of give you a sidelong look. At least it's not Icewind Dale. Yeah. That place was cold. Mm. That place was cool. What did we do up there again? Fight a giant or something? Keep your eyes open for tomb tappers, Jack. That's right. That's too many things <laughs> hunting me. I'd... Yeah, you're pissing off a lot of people, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow you guys have still been standing behind me. So it, yeah. maybe maybe don't stand too close then, I guess. No, we'll just have to stand closer. Protect you. Riding in a super tight formation. <laughs> That's right. Oren has taken to riding with B on Snowdrop. He's not bunking with Doran anymore. Mm. And he's like playing the mandolin as you guys travel through the storm. And they're like chatting and laughing together. Uktor! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, that forest was quite beautiful, but I'm really happy to get out in the open once again. See, where I come from, I turn to Thera, which is the other side of the water, uh, I'm big into the diversity of the landscapes. I'm a ranger by trade, and uh, my little continent has a lot more variation in a lot tighter little area than your place over here in uh, Faroon or whatever you call it. Tell me more. What's it like? Oh, well, it's beautiful. Deep jungles, mushrooms taller than your eyes. Oh, the creatures there. Mushrooms? What? Taller than your eyes? Yeah. Yeah, like the ones we saw in the cave. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Well, they're not higher than your head. They're just between your eyes in the top of your head. What am I supposed to say? That's how tall they are. We have these giant sort of creatures that we hunt down for for the meat in their underbelly. It's a wonderful place. I'd love to take you there if you're really interested in the natural world. And... When's the last time you were there? Are you homesick? Oh, and I sort of look to be uh, a little bit nervously. And you can tell based on the fact that she's within earshot, Red's like, yeah, of course I'm homesick. Gonna go back there sometime pretty soon, I'd say. He says loud enough for B to hear. Mm -hmm. And then sort of drops the subject altogether. Sarah gestures up ahead through the storm. Up uh, here we are. Hmm? We'll reach Everlyn tonight, if the weather permits. Amazing. And we've come to a flat stretch of earth, leading roughly north, relatively straight, devoid of scrub or tree, covered with snow. This is the Evermore Way. You stop your horses to gain your bearings and maybe have a snack, and the Thera helps you pick some clotted snow and ice out from the horse's hooves. As we are stopped, Red hops off and checks to see if it's packing snow. It is. Oh, he makes a real nice snowball and whips it at Doran. I love it. I mean, roll the hit. Natural 20! Whoa! <laughs> Double damage. <laughs> <laughs> Where does it hit me? Yeah, where do you hit him? Right in the blushing bottom. Where else? Red aims for the back of Doran's head, but at the last second, Kraloth just absent mind is like, Doran, do you? And Doran like turns and gets it <laughs> right in the fucking face. And I'm like, oh, sorry, Doran. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when you see for the first time, Doran drops his axe in the snow Ow! and wipes his face looking at you with disgust until the disgusted look immediately turns to a smile and a grimace. And this little dwarf barrels towards you and picks you up and like <laughs> plows you into a snowbank. <laughs> and Red doesn't even fight it. He's just like, ah! and like takes it full force as he like barrels into the plume of snow and just like poof, ups air behind him. Guess it's time for a break. <laughs> and Kraloth hops off the horse and begins to open his, his bag of food. And he reaches in and he pulls out cookies 
that have been just hanging out in there. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, he, uh, Trail cookies. He hands them out. And, um, Are these vegan friendly? And he's got some powder as well. And he makes a little fire and, and starts to heat up some water to put in this powder and makes little hot cocos for everybody. Oh, that's cute as nice. fuck. Aww. With marshmallows? I think taking the break yeah. now that like everyone yeah. is on the horizon, Jack's got his own journal out and he's leafing through it and, make, and trying to like figure out exactly what the plan is here. He's a little bit nervous about Moongleam Tower and, and Valharo. Um, cool. So you guys have a cute hot chocolate break and a snowball fight. Yeah, and Red like lays down to make what we would perceive as a snow angel, and then when he like stands up, it's this weird like it's a creature clearly, but no one recognizes it, and he's like, "It's a flog on." What are you talking you, about? Like, Just stand walks up carefully away. to add like flog-on. a final detail that yeah. doesn't make any sense at all <laughs> with your foot, you, like, and then <laughs> and then B like walks over and she's like, "Huh, oh, yeah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> As you guys pack back up and get ready to hit the road again, Thera sort of clears her throat. And she's like, I'll, I'll stay on course with you if you'll have me now that you're here at the road. I plan to continue east from Everland to Jalanthar to visit an old friend, a ranger named uh, Nardros. Oh, and my stubs perk up. He's also of the Emerald Enclave. Cool. He might like to meet you as well if you're interested in accompanying me past Everland whenever you're done with your business, of course. Is he a bowie or a bladey? I don't know what that means. Well, does he use a bow as a ranger or blades? Oh, <laughs> I've never seen him with a bow, so I imagine he's a bladey. Ah, cool. I could use to talk with a bladey. I haven't met a few. It's that ranger slang for you. I'd like to bring her along. I mean, if that's okay with you guys. Well, it sounds like she'd like to bring us along. And yeah, I've... If we survive Valharo... Uh, what do you mean, survive Valhalla? Sure. What's Valharo? Yeah. Well, he's the guy, but he, he's a wizard, and he's he's got a whole thing with, with my dad and the family, and so I, I don't know. Wizards are bad news. Uh, hold on. Pause, everyone. Are you saying that we're walking into something that could be bad news? I don't... It, like, it's... It's like family business kind of bad news. Us? Walk into bad news? Well, all I mean to say is there's bad blood between your family and his family. I don't think it's violent. I just, they definitely, the name has never been spoken with with any kind of happy reverence. Would he recognize you? Yeah, I met him 20 years ago in Silvery Moon. It was, it was great uh, when he knew who my mom was, but as soon as he found out about the dad's side of the family, it, it turned a little sour. And I mean, that was I was only 30 at the time, so I, I had a little hot-headed myself. We might have had words. Wow. Well, I mean, not to cut you out, Jack, but is it possible that you being there would, you know, ruin this for us? Should we maybe play it cool, or, or do you think it would affect it negatively at all? If we need information from him, and there's a possibility that he might not like your family, maybe it makes sense to try at first without you there? And I sort of looked at Kraloth like, I mean... And I'm only saying it because you said there's bad blood there. It's been 20 years. You think he would remember you? He literally started this conversation being like, bad blood between a wizard. (laughs) How would you feel about meeting him, Jack? I think we can get past it. I'm certainly willing to try. Jack's not one to make enemies. Look at the Hunt Lords. Tomb Tappers. <laughs> the reanimated corpse of a wizard from Icewind Dale. Yeah. 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 I mean, oh. let's be real here, guys. I think the track record might be... <laughs> you know, we could just send uh, Jack and Doran in to start. And if they fail because of Jack's connections, then Kraloff and Red can go in right afterwards and ask the same questions. Very inconspicuously. Well, wouldn't it make more sense to do the opposite? That we try first, and if we can't go, then use the connection? Because he wouldn't be sullied by Jack's experience? Well, I, I mean, just I just think Jack's an asset in terms of his knowledge. You added an asset on there. I really <laughs> thought you were going to stop halfway through that word. <laughs> uh, you know what? If Jack feels fine about it, I feel fine about it. It might lead to some very interesting dramatic tension as well. And worst case scenario, we can kill him. Jack, I mean. This hero guy seems cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anybody who doesn't like Jack's onto something. All right, look, good or bad, Jack does know him. Jack, you feel fine about it. Worst case scenario, we'll uh, improvise. That's what we do best. Let's get out of here. And Red climbs up on True Stephen and starts along the road. As the afternoon wears on and you continue 
north along the Evermore Way, a farmhouse leaking a thin line of smoke comes into view just north of the road. It becomes apparent after a few more minutes of walking that the building has been damaged. One wall is partly demolished, and the smoke issues from a hole in the sagging roof, not a chimney as you previously assumed. Whoa! Hey! What's going on over there? Kieran, do you want to go check it out? Sure, boss. Uh, I wouldn't mind going as well, and I hop off and sort of stealth up behind. uh, Be careful, Red. Kieran takes to the sky, and Red, you stealthily traverse the snow. I'm going to cast Pass Without Trace on myself. Sure. So we see Kieran above you and you below as you sort of stake out this farmhouse. The first thing you notice, Red, from the ground and Kieran simultaneously from the sky is that the snow around the farmhouse is stained red here and there. And Red, you peer in through this hole in the farmhouse wall to see that This whole building is in a poor state. There's a lot of damaged furniture. It's just a big mess inside, but you don't see any living creatures. And then Kieran from the sky reports back to you, Jack. Yeah. There's a dead body here, boss. A giant. Oh, shit. Can you tell what kind? Not from up here. I can't see the giant? It's around the back of the house. Can I just do a perception while I'm looking inside? Sure. 17. Red, you note that the smoke that you had seen coming from the farmhouse is the product of what had surely been a massive bonfire, though only a few pieces of smoldering furniture remains. There's shattered fragments of pottery lying all over the floor. I'll send a message to Red as soon as I'm within range of that spell just to to let him know about the giant out back. Um, Tell Kraloth and Doran, we should get over there. There, Something killed a giant. I turn to Thera and ask, have you come by this way before? Not recently, no. Do you know this farmhouse? I spend most of my time in the forest. Hmm. Okay, Doran, you ready? Yep. Picturing Doran, like, hoisting orc splitter and... Yeah, wiping it off. And I'm going to move along the side of the building to try to get eyes on the downed giant. Yeah, you turn the corner and it's there. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) I'm dead. Can I tell what kind of giant it was? It was a hill giant. It's been massacred. It's leaked massive amounts of blood out into a great pool that's frozen. I can tell by the smell. I guess I can respond to Jack with a message Mm -hmm. as well, and I'll tell him. Hill giant seems to be dead. And just from where I am, can I roll medicine on it? Maybe see how long it's been dead? Sure. 18. Good roll. Um, You would estimate from... The temperature of the body, maybe you lay your paw on an exposed piece of flesh and you feel that it's hard, frozen. This is maybe a day or two old. And I finish my thought and I say, maybe a day or two old. And then I turn and I assume I see the others approaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're within, you know, 20 or 40 feet of you now. And just while they span that last 20 or 40, I just close my eyes and do primeval awareness just to see if I can detect any humanoids within a five mile radius. I mean, worrying about the immediate area, obviously. There are are no humanoids detectable. Perfect. And then I just call out, hill giant here, dead a few days at least. So let's investigate this murder scene. Hmm. Team Corpse Inspector, <laughs> here they are right. to find out the cause of death. Come on, Doran, you and me are Team Awesome Boys. Let's go inside the house and poke around. And Doran and I leave you two to the dead body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a moment of like Corpse Inspectors, huh? Just like, a, a, you know, rub shoulders with you and try and sort of walk around the area to reconstruct what I think might have happened here in my mind. Just sure. try and see if, how many footsteps are there. What size are all the boots? Are there any like broken bits of weapon or armor or blood that's not hill giant blood in any sort of way or Great. clues? And as Doran and I are walking away, I just whisper to him, I already figured it out. It's a hill giant and it died a few days ago. Let's go inside and loot. Absolutely. And, and good thinking. Um, Roll an investigation check, Rob. Fucking natural 20. Hey! Nice. Nice. 27. It's no snowball, but. It's not good enough. I know. All right, Jack. As you pace around this body, I'm picturing Kraloff kind of pacing in your footsteps. I what cast you... Detect Magic. Oh, hell yeah. You don't find anything. But... Cool. 
Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jack, you pace around this body and you see that there are many footprints all around this creature. You see that the blood here is not just in kind of a pool that you would picture a stagnant, bleeding body uh, would have made. That it's kind of like this giant had dragged itself a little ways and then bled out in the snow. So it's kind of got like a smear of blood leading to the final carcass. And you also recognize that the many footprints all around the corpse of this giant are dwarven feet. As Jack has his nose in the snow, figuring out, you know, how many hand spans wide these boots are and are they of dwarven <laughs> make and if so, where they could they have come from? Uh, Kraloth, you spot off to the side of the farmhouse by a well. There is a fresh grave. Mm. Your grave cleric eyes see a grave careful pile of stacked rocks, and you know what must lie under there. Meanwhile, Red and Doran inside the farmhouse, a scene of utter chaos. Mine, mine, yours, mine, mine, yours, yours, <laughs> yours, mine, yours. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it's none of ours because we're trespassing right now. What? And, oh, and no, until I was just we sing a song. Yours, mine, mine, yours. Yes, no, of course not. I don't want to take anything. <sighs> Nothing in here is worthwhile. No offense. I pick up a pot and drop it, smashing it. What happened here? I don't know. Um, I'd like to roll for uh, perception or investigation, maybe. Investigation, mm-hmm. Um, oh, uh, two. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh. Doran, you are overcome by the wreckage. It's it's so weird to be just in this house. All messy. I can't focus on one single thing. Well, it's all right. Let's just take it line by line. But okay, maybe instead of investigation, what are we looking at? Here? You mentioned that a lot of the furniture was pulled out. Yeah, so I'll tell you in broad strokes what you're experiencing here. The wall of the farmhouse... Uh, read that you were peeking in before this has been demolished additionally the inside of this farmhouse is largely just kind of a one room affair the people who lived here were not wealthy creatures and most of the furniture has been burnt up in this bonfire there are many shattered fragments of pottery all over the place it looks like most of the dishes have been destroyed and I turn to door and I say, all right, well, look, there's a big hole in the wall. Oh, I didn't see that there. <laughs> oh, Doran. Uh, is it giant sized? Not really. Uh, I have no idea how big it would be. Maybe a giant could fit through there That's or not. Funny. But regardless, there's a lot of mess around here. Can I look around to see if there's multiple tracks to see if there's like multiple people that were running through here? Yeah, you can roll survival. 19. You would estimate that many medium-sized creatures occupied this place for a matter of a few days. Interesting. Well, it looks like whoever was in here was here for a few days. Mm. Additionally, it's very strange to you because you realize that this wall was demolished from the inside out and not attacked from the outside in. Mm. Interesting. And I tell that to Doran. Finally, as you are examining the wall, you notice that the wall beside the demolished wall is marked over and over and over with indentations that were probably made by the head of a throwing axe or a similar blade. Hmm. Doran, what does this look like to you? And I walk up and I just sort of put my paw on the axe hole. I finger the axe hole. It looks... <laughs> <laughs> Ew! <laughs> Very good. I couldn't. It was so perfect. It was, per it was right there. Well... It looks like. And Doran now paces the room. Mm -hmm. Well, mm, I'm thinking that whoever was in here tried to get through that wall, and he's pointing to the wall with all the axe holes in it, and then they decided that that wall was too sturdy, and they went through this wall. And then a giant arrived, and they realized that they should get out of here, and the giant died of being too cold. And so they ran. Uh, Don, are you feeling all right? I sort of like put my hand on his forehead and I'm like, I, I don't think so, bud. I think this looks like it was some sort of encampment. Maybe bandits were moving through. Uh, oh, get out of here. It looks like people spend some time here. And I look around. Does it look yeah, like people true. were spending time here? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, the bonfire is one good way of looking at it. And there's indeed there's some like drips of fat 
and scraps mm. of bone in the fire, this huge fire that had burned for quite a long time that's now basically out. Kraloth, you are looking at a cairn of rocks. Hmm. And it's right beside the well, you said? That's right. Yeah, Kraloth kneels down next to it and just looks to see if there are any markings. Is it covered in snow? Are there footsteps around? Yeah, there are. There are footsteps, and they're similar footprints to the ones that were surrounding the giants. There, there's some evidence of this having been a fresh grave, some sprays of dirt over the crust of snow that had been there for, you know, days ago. How big is the grave? Probably would be host to a medium creature. Hey, Jack, we got a grave over here. Yeah. And as Kraloff calls him over, he's going to just walk over to the well while he waits for Rob, <laughs> Jack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These dwarves must have got lucky if they only lost one fighting a hill giant. Dwarves, eh? Yeah, you can tell by the, the boots. Huh. Uh, the, to the, there was a detail that stood out to me, and I, I don't know if it's... So the, the hill giant was trying to crawl away to somewhere before it died. Is there anything obvious that it might have been crawling towards? Like, was it trying to get to something, or was it just trying to get away from a bunch of dwarves that did not expect to fuck it up? Probably the latter. All right. Kraloth looks at the well. And he just kind of walks over to it, pulls down his goggles, and looks down within, just peers down into the depths. You see a mostly empty well. There's a thin skin of ice down at the very bottom. Would have been hard to draw fresh water from here at this temperature. But mm. otherwise, it's empty. What do you make of that grave, Jack? Like I said, lucky they only lost one fight in a hill giant. These folks must have known what they were doing. Let's go see what... What's happened inside? Inside, what's happening? Red's sitting on a table, like, trying to get through the door, and I'm like, Dorin, look at the size of the footprints and, and the axe holes, and look at all the things that people have done. <laughs> what do you think it is? And he's like, Red's like kind of trying to guide him along a little bit. <laughs> Dorin paces the room one last time looking around, and there's like a moment of aha, and, it, and, it, and he looks over there. He's like, bling, 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 bling. Why, these are dwarves! <laughs> oh, 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 Doran, good job, bud! There must have been a group of dwarves here. Oh my goodness, of course. I don't know how I didn't notice this before. Ah, me neither. Look at the pile of excrement over here. This is clearly <laughs> dwarven. <laughs> and look at the way that they left the kitchen. Clearly dwarves. The camera like pans back. Just above Doran is like a massive mural that says dwarves were here. And Red's just like sitting there watching. He's like, yeah, you pieced it together, bud. It's it's a mural that's over top of the hole in the wall, which is perfectly height for only dwarves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good thinking. It probably is dwarves. But well, that's what seems odd about this. It, it looks like they were waiting. I, it sounds a bit weird, but maybe you could inform. Would dwarves lay a trap like this? It almost looks like, and do I get the impression that maybe the dwarves were using this as a bit of like a lure or something? Because you said that someone was throwing axe, an axe over and over, like waiting time. And you said people were like cooking and stuff like that, right? Yes. It occurs to you as you survey this one room farmhouse that the demolished wall was probably deconstructed to allow cover for the dwarves inside of this farmhouse so that they could use projectile weapons while also hiding behind this partly demolished wall. Like They've like created holes for themselves to fire a crossbow through maybe. Red's hunting mind went to blind immediately mm -hmm. because out of all the fighting styles that he's used to, this is absolutely one of the most familiar, laying in wait for your prey to come to you first and foremost. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which is why in the, the oddity of it, that Red sort of pieced this together quickly. Seems out of character, but very in his class. And as the two of you put this together, Kraloth and Jack come around the corner. You guys find anything in here? Yeah, it looks like, well, Dawn put together that this must be some sort of hunting blind. Uh, dwarves were here waiting for... Yeah. Uh, I guess they're prey. Yeah, that giant didn't know it hit it. Yeah. No, no, it makes sense now. But who? Now that we know it's dwarves, can I um, do another roll? Maybe to look for specifically who might have been here? You can roll a history check. Uh, at least this time it's the 16. Oh, nice. nice. Not bad. There are a number of dwarven strongholds in the area, though not directly proximal to 
the area around Everland, but Mithril Hall is to the northwest. Mm. Citadel Feldbar is to the northeast, and then farther to the east, Citadel Adbar. So there are a number of different dwarven fortresses, and you know these dwarves could have come from any number of mm. great civilizations. You don't know specifically of any battalions or troops that would necessarily be in the area. But I guess maybe would I know they were hill dwarves instead of mountain dwarves? If you examine the footprints outside you're able to discern that they were mountain dwarves here Ah, okay okay how can you tell doran i I didn't pick that up oh well you see i lead jack back outside even with your 27 there are some (laughs) things a wizard doesn't know (laughs) well but it's my mission to eliminate those things in fact so (laughs) maybe maybe i take a walk back outside and as i come back in i say yeah there were definitely Mountain dwarves here. If only I knew what clan. Then we could send a message and say thanks and maybe find out what what else they're doing. Well, hold on. What do you mean thanks? And I turn towards the house and I'm like, this place looks like it's been trashed. Guys, this this place, this this they were waiting here for a few days, weren't they? Yeah. Well, what happened to the people who lived here? Well, I I I would assume it was abandoned because I don't know dwarven tribes that would come in and tell a family to get out so that they could uh, you know use this as some sort of hide um, but you ask how how I can discern the hill dwarves from the mountain dwarves why it's simple Jack look at the size of the boots look at the shape of the boots if this were a hill dwarf these these tracks would be much softer are you a hill dwarf no I am a mountain dwarf that is offensive to ask <laughs> it's by the way just FYI the boot shape and plus there's a star in the in the bottom of this this boot and uh, i know a hill dwarf would not have a star yeah i mean i i admit my knowledge of hill dwarf cobblers is is not what it could be so i, I really appreciate this i'm gonna take a couple of notes and uh but it will be now well now you know <laughs> yeah that's that's wow i learned something you've only read two books on hill dwarf cobblery and that that was a decade well, but see, ago but, and they were they were about hill dwarf armor and weapons and, and clothing in general it didn't really stop at the sole of the boot you know it wasn't it wasn't beard to boot <laughs> as they say doran you mentioned what clan this might have been i mean i do believe that whoever it was was very skilled at fighting as jack pointed out outside they only had one casualty fighting an entire mm. hill giant i mean we killed 30 without any breaking a sweat but whatever there's a casualty outside <laughs> jack only went down three times <laughs> <laughs> and it was petrified once, but let's not forget about that. Doran, you hear that there's a grave outside. And I think Doran kind of starts to make his way towards the door, sort of backing up as in can't get there fast enough, even though he wants to answer Kraloth's question. And he turns as he's talking to Kraloth, he's kind of backing up. He says, well, you you know how dwarves are. I mean, they wouldn't send their uh, the kids and the... And the, and the you know the cooks out here. They're obviously sending the the warriors out here. So uh, they're, they're you know obviously they're not going to be that many casualties. I just want to take a look at it one minute. One at uh, the grave out here. I'll be I'll be right back. And he, and he kind of runs out. Uh, hey Kraloth, you ever seen dwarf shit? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Jack's gonna follow Doran. And what do you do, Doran? Um, Doran looks around for the grave. It's a cairn of stacked stones, so the people who buried this body found a number of similarly shaped and similar size of stones and right. stacked them in a rough pyramid atop this body. Now, does that geometric pile say anything specific to the Dwarven clan or tribe, or is it just how many other cultures might bury their dead? I think this is a really great question. This actually reminds you of your past. You fought in a great war some 50 years ago, and you remember mass graves. You remember the bodies of your brethren having been put into these huge holes in the ground, dug carefully by dwarves like you, but for sheer convenience because of their number, having to bury them together. But in order to honor them and to remember them, there were these giant pyramids that were created to house 
the dead, these makeshift crypts on the battlegrounds. It reminds you very much of people that you would have fought alongside, shoulder to shoulder, in these great wars. These are our soldiers, Doran. Doran approaches the grave and kind of leans forward on it with one hand, and then two hands, and he braces himself in sort of like a standing, leaning position against the grave. You know, this reminds me, Jack, of the, the graves that we would bury for the, the fallen dwarven soldiers back in the, in the wars of this land. God, those were terrible times. We buried so many that... Oh, I wasn't going to get emotional, but this is... It's quite emotional seeing it like this. Yeah, it, it's all right, Doran. I think we're... We're okay for the moment to, to let it sink in. Um, yeah. Do you want to head back inside? You know what? Give me a moment, and then I'll be back inside shortly. Sure. I take my own stone from the ground, and I place it you know, where I think it needs to go, just to finish it. And you hear Doran mumbling as you walk away, something, something, Moradin. The sun starts to get low on the horizon as we watch... Doran pay tribute to this fallen soldier. A solemn time for Doran. A fallen dwarf is never something to celebrate. Thank you once again to our Patreon supporters, Christopher Ryan Evans, Mitchell Cantwell, Colin Burkhart, Daniel, Doug, Katie Orrit, and Merlin. See you next week! Hey, there's a little bit more. Keep listening. I'm imagining Kraloth and Red just like hanging out in the house and waiting and being like, okay, so if zombies attacked us right now, <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> Wouldn't have a chance, buddy. I'd be like, pew, pew, pew. But what about you? Would you try to turn them undead? Uh, you know what? I think I would try to like block that door. And, nah, uh, no, get... you wouldn't because he'd come through that one. Oh, no. <laughs> Do I have to roll for it? <laughs> yeah, we're playing D&D we're playing &D in D&D. &D. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I've actually always yeah. thought about doing yeah. that. <laughs> so meta. You guys are on the campfire. Humans and households. Yeah. <laughs>